Thanks. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Brother. How are you doing? I'm alright, thanks for your help yesterday. We'll nice. No, I'm, I'm, we've had a problem you know before. I mean? Thank you. Just, anyway, yeah, we did we'll we did. deal with it. Good morning, Good morning. happy Easter, you're alright. He's with us. Oh, he's with you, so you'll make sure they've got a seat. We will, yeah, yeah we've got one more coming with us. Right, okay, right, I'm going to go. Right, I'm going to go. So I'll improvise. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Well, a very good morning, warm welcome to St. Lawrence's this morning. People are just squeezing into little spots, so uh, if there's spaces near you and you need to move up, do to let other people in, that would be great. And my name is Chris, I'm the Associate Minister here, and it's my pleasure to be with you this morning to join together in worship on this great Easter day. It's good to, to welcome those who are watching uh, online and a very warm welcome to them wherever the camera is, warm welcome to them. Uh, just for those of you who are in the congregation, the camera will not be panning anywhere else apart from on the dais and the um, during communion as you come up for communion the camera is not on 
So do feel free to move around uh, comfortably uh, as you will. Andy, there's one just here for you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, great to be with you all. And on this Easter Sunday, uh, particularly warm greetings to you all from Steve, our rector. I hope he is watching and uh, we, we give him and send him our love. I'm hoping he's watching, but if not, please give him our love, Lindsay. And uh, we just hope and pray that he will be back with us soon, fighting fit and raring to go and undoing all the things that I've done wrong in the past <laughs> few weeks. I hope not. I hope not. So, we have a communion service this morning. I hope it's accessible to all. Uh, but if you've got youngsters, just relax. We are a family. And we have all ages, all shapes, all sizes, all eye colours, hair colours, everything. So just relax and let's worship together as a family. Just one notice. Um, if you really do want to be on our electoral roll, our membership roll, closing date is Tuesday, so please fill in a form today there at the back and pop it through the parish, parish office uh, envelope. That would be great. Without more ado, let's stand to sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. <laughs> people coming in. Uh, it's great. Good. You've all got seats. Lovely. Well, I need your help this morning. Uh, I need, I know often you will think I talk a lot of rubbish, a lot of nonsense. So this morning I need you to help me sort out from some sense from some nonsense. You're happy to do that? Happy to help me? Yeah. That'd be great. Good. Okay. So, let's have a look at our first sense or nonsense. Okay. Is that, what's that then? Sense? Anyone think it's nonsense? Who knows what it is? Pop your hand up. Who knows what it is? 
N of G times mass times the speed of light squared, also known as Einstein's theory of relativity. So it's a bit nonsense to me because I don't <laughs> quite understand it, but it is sense. Okay, the next one, let's move on. Okay, youngsters, how's that? That is nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> Clearly it's nonsense because two, well, it says two equals two equals five. So even that's not, okay, let's move on. Sense, okay, four times four is 16. Okay, perfect sense. Five minus three equals seven. <laughs> nonsense. Thank you very much. Nonsense. Clearly nonsense. Okay. Well, it doesn't really matter. I have got a hand mic on. Uh, okay. What about this one? What do you think? Those clever people that are very clever people in this congregation, I know. Very clever people. Somebody over here. You think it's nonsense, because they're not really words, are they, at all? Is it an anagram? Oh, no, Lindsay. I think it says sense or nonsense. Oh, no, Lindsay teaches at the school. <laughs> sense or nonsense, why is that? It looks like nonsense, but if you substitute A for B and B for C and C for D and so on, it's code for sense or nonsense. Okay. Am I doing all right, talking rubbish? <laughs> Right, twas brillig and the slimy toes. Oh, I can't hear you. Hannah, tell me. It's kind of a trick because it was a nonsense poem that he wrote. Oh, well done. It's a trick. A nonsense poem. Okay, by, written by Lewis Carroll. The whole poem was nonsense. Do we have any more? I can't quite remember. Have we got any more? Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, now. Now, there are some mathematicians, but I don't know whether we've got any in our congregation this morning. Oh, gosh, it's a real hubbub, isn't it? Oh, oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Paul says, ah, oh, it's right because it's binary. It's nonsense if we use in normal numbers but perfect sense using binary. No more? Oh, one more. All dogs are animals, therefore all animals are dogs. Nonsense. Why? All dogs are animals, aren't they? We're animals. We're animals, but we're not dogs. Is that what you're saying? I think that's right. Sounds logical, but it's nonsense isn't it? It's nonsense. Okay, I think that's the last one, isn't it? So, some of those statements are nonsense. Some look like nonsense, but in fact do make sense, don't they? Some seem to make sense, but are just rubbish. And some make perfect sense and are very clear. And all of which goes to show that making sense of something is not always as easy as we might think. And if we still doubt that, what about this one? <coughs> he is not here. He is risen. <laughs> it makes sense. Some people might say that this is nonsense. But as a Christian, I believe it's true. And we're later going to hear for some witnesses to this whole story of Jesus rising from the dead. We're going to think about that in a moment. Thank you, James. But first of all, we're going to uh, just think a bit more about our relationship with Jesus on a daily basis. Sometimes we don't get it right, do we? 
I'm one of those. I don't always get it right. And we're able to come to Jesus and say we're sorry. And we can do that because he died for us on the cross and rose again. So we're going to have a bit of quiet and we're going to be thinking of some of those things we're not proud of. As we begin this morning, we're conscious of those things that we have thought, said and done that don't honour God in our lives. So because Jesus died for us, we can be forgiven when we do wrong. Thank you, James. Jesus Christ was a master and triumphant Lord. We come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We've lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We've lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We've lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And so may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And a special prayer for today, Easter Sunday. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you've broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to stand to sing now the song, The Greatest Day in History. Let's stand.
we hear our reading this morning from our scriptures. Thank you. Hear the gospel according to St. Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. They asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends, let me go over the message with you one final time. This message that I, Paul, proclaimed and that you have made your own. This message on which you took your stand and by which your life has been saved. I'm assuming now that your belief was the real thing and not a passing fancy, that you're in this for good and holding fast. The first thing I did was place before you what was placed so emphatically before me, that the Messiah died for our sins, exactly as the scripture tells it. That he was buried, that he was raised from death on the third day, again, exactly as scripture says. That he presented himself alive to Peter, then to his closest 12 followers, and later to more than 500 of his followers, all at the same time. Most of them still around, although a few have since died. That he then spent time with James and the rest of those he commissioned to represent him, and that he finally presented himself alive to me. It was fitting that I bring up the rear. I don't deserve to be included in that inner circle, as you well know, having spent all those early years trying my best to stamp God's church right out of existence. But because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. I was not about to let his grace go to waste. Haven't I worked hard trying to do more than any of the others? Even then, my work didn't amount to all that much. It was God giving me the work to do, God giving me the energy to do it. So whether you heard it from me or from those others, it's all the same. We spoke God's truth and you entrusted your lives. So who was that speaking? Who? Who was it? Paul. It was Paul speaking. Of course, he wasn't a follower of Jesus when he was alive, was he? But he came to believe in him after a really interesting event. We might hear a bit more about that later. So let's do a little recap, shall we, of the events of the last week. Last Sunday morning, what were we thinking about last Sunday morning? What was happening uh, way back in Jerusalem at the same time last week? Week. What was happening? What was happening? Nobody remember? So, Palm Sunday, Jesus was arriving in Jerusalem with his followers with wonderful palm branches. Hosanna! Hosanna! They cried. And then, and then, on Friday, what happened on Friday? Have we just gone from last Sunday when we were shouting and waving banners to this Sunday and he's risen? What happened in between? He died. he died on the cross, didn't he? He died on the cross. But then, two days later... Oh, come on, guys! <laughs> he's risen! He's risen! He's risen indeed. 
So we're going to be uh, thinking about what happened because over the next few weeks after Jesus died and then rose again, loads of people met Jesus and there was lots of discussion about what was going on. So we're going to meet some of the witnesses of those events and we're going to ask them questions in the witness box. Now, who knows what a witness is? Who knows what a witness is? Come on, guys. What's a witness? Yes. Somebody who's, seen something. Somebody who's seen something. And in a court of law, a witness has to do what? <laughs> Tell the truth and they swear on the Bible, don't they? To say that they're going to tell the truth. So can I call Mary Magdalene? Mary? Mary Magdalene? Where are you? Oh, is that you? Come on, can you swear please that you're going to tell the truth? Yes, I swear I'll tell the truth. Uh, what's your connection to Jesus then? Well, I'm a great friend of Jesus. He, he helped me greatly at a time of difficulty in my life. Difficulty, okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you know he's alive? Well, I was with Salome and Mary, the mother of James, watching Jesus being put on the cross and dying. We followed his body after it was taken down, and it was put in the tomb in the garden. It was such a rush to get him buried properly because the Sabbath had begun and his body wasn't properly prepared. A big stone was put across the tomb. After the Sabbath had ended, we bought spices so that we might go and anoint Jesus, his body, and we went to the garden really early, just after sunrise. On the way, we were wondering how we would move the stone from, from the entrance of the tomb, but when we got there, somebody had already rolled the stone away. We, we walked into the tomb and there was a man in white robes. He quite frightened us, but he said, don't be alarmed, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he's risen and he, he, he's not here. Go and give Peter and his disciples a message. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. We were shaking with fear and ran away as fast as we could, but we told no one of what had happened because we were afraid. Hmm, very interesting. So how's your life been changed as a result of all that? Well, for some time I was frightened as I didn't understand what had happened. But then many of us met Jesus and we were able to talk with him. I know now that he's alive forever and he will always be with me. Wow. Thank you, Mary. Calling Peter. Peter. Where's Peter? To the, to, to the, the witness box, please. Can you swear I, on the Bible? I Who promise to you? tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Okay, thank you, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, well, my name is Simon, but Jesus called me Peter and Cephas, which means rock. And, and, and did you have a connection to Jesus? Well, I followed him. Oh, I, I think I was one of Jesus' closest followers. I saw many things. I saw him feed thousands. I saw him walk on water. He even got me walking on water. That was something I wasn't expecting, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, I saw him arrested. And then I let him down. After he was arrested three times, I was asked if I knew Jesus. And I said I didn't. I'm so ashamed of that. So how do you know he's alive? Well, first of all, the, the two Marys and Salome, they told me that an angel had told them that he was alive. But then, then I met him for myself on the beach. Oh, there were other times as well. Oh, and before you ask, it was definitely Jesus. It wasn't a ghost. 
So how has your life been changed? Has it been changed? Because Peter, you were pretty firm in your ideas, weren't you? Have well, you the biggest changed? thing for me was he forgave me for letting him down. You know, I denied him and he forgave me. But he's also entrusted me to help others become followers of Jesus. Maybe that's why we're here today. I do hope so. Thank you. Now, Paul, Paul was here, because we heard from him earlier. Paul, thank you. Paul, here we go. So, very serious. Who, who are you? Well, my parents gave me the name Saul. I was born a Jew in the city of Tarsus in the region of Sicilia, part of the Roman, prov Roman province of Syria. Saul was my Jewish name, my old name. Paul, my Roman one, my new name. So... What was your connection to Jesus? By heritage, I was from the tribe of Benjamin. Considering the law, a Pharisee. Jesus and his followers did not follow that law, the law of my ancestors. I hunted down those followers, and when I found them, I put them in prison. Hmm. So how do you know he's alive? Ah, Damascus, a road that led somewhere unexpected. In my arrogance, thrown from my horse. In my sin, challenged by the voice of Jesus himself. In my sight, literally blinded by the truth. Do you know what Jesus said to me that day? Saul, why do you persecute me? My, my friends had to lead me by the hand to Damascus, where I was met by a man a man I would have thrown to prison mere hours before. Ananias, a Christian. He prayed for me. Prayed that I might receive the Holy Spirit. And I did. My blindness healed. My sight restored. I now knew that Jesus was my saviour. Wow. And has your life been changed as a result? Changed? My life has been transformed. Once my confidence lay in the law, in my religious heritage. Now it lies in Christ Jesus. Now I spend all my time and energy telling others the good news of Jesus. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you, Paul. All these people met Jesus and were convinced he was alive. You've heard that with passion, that they were convinced he was alive. None of them were expecting this from the events that had happened. But after they met Jesus, they were never quite the same again. We don't meet Jesus qu quite the same way as they did. But this church building, those watching, they're full of people who've met Jesus and have been changed. We can have hope and needn't be afraid because Jesus loves us, cares for us. He rose again and he's with us forever. Amen. Let's stand to sing. See what a morning.
So we remain standing to declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we sit for our prayers. Thank you, Jane. For our prayers today, I'm going to, it's going to be in sections. I'm going to say a, a short bit. I will say, hallowed be your name, and then we will have a time of silence after each section. And there will be some images on the screen to help you with your prayers if you would like to. <coughs> Lord God, early in the morning, when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty and terror. You gave birth to all that we know. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, when the world least expected it, a newborn child, crying in a cradle, announced that you had come among us, that you were one of us. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, surrounded by respectable liars, religious leaders, anxious statesmen, and silent friends, you accepted the penalty for doing good, for being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew proved that you had risen, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten, denied and destroyed you. Hallowed be your name. This morning, in the multicolored company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death and resurrection, your interest in us. So we pray for ourselves and for others. Lord, bring new life where we are worn and tired. New love, 
where we have turned hard-hearted. Forgiveness, where we feel hurt and where we have wounded. And the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit, where we are prisoners of ourselves. Amen. Would you please stand? The risen Lord came and stood amongst his disciples and said, My peace I give you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. of the peace. We sing our next song, Jesus is Lord. to share around the communion table in a few moments and I would like to invite all who love the Lord to share today. If you would prefer not to receive bread and wine but come for a blessing, we would welcome you of all ages. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. 
we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This, this is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This, this is, is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So we sit for our prayer. The prayer that Jesus taught us our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Jesus, shed 
Jesu všichni. body of Jesus broken for you. The 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 body of Jesus broken for you. Sign of the body of Jesus broken for you. No. <laughs> the body of Jesus broken for you. Oh. The Lord bless you and may he keep you. May his face shine upon you. Now and always. <laughs> Jesus broken for you. <coughs> the body of Jesus broken for you.
Jesus broken for you. Jesus Christ, I think upon well, your broken. sacrifice. You became nothing, born out to death.
body of Jesus broken. Welcome the body of Christ. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's stand to sing, Thine be the glory.
been able to uh, go through this service without mentioning something that might be on some of your minds. Chocolate. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> oh, <you're> the <laughs> there may be a little one on the way out for you, but we might need to do a little miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. So bear with, bear with. Hopefully there are plenty. If you're able, do join us for a cup of tea or coffee in the parish centre after the service. But it's been wonderful to celebrate this Resurrection Day with you all. And a final blessing. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you, be with those you love and care for and those you serve now and always. Amen. Amen. He is not here, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.